rising up across the UK. New rules restrict restricting how many people can meet up with each other and where have come into force. Only six people can gather indoors in England. It's the same in Scotland and Wales, but children don't count towards the total there. The UK government says police can find people if they don't follow the new guidelines. Here's the policing minister, Kit Malthouse. We're obviously moving very, very quickly at the moment to try and get the regulations in place, get the guidance out to police officers as fast as we can over the next two or three days so that they're in a position to know how they should interpret it. The total number of reported coronavirus deaths in the UK is now 41,628. Morning. Back out again. It's been a long time since I've been out. Been meaning to get out, but just couldn't get built anywhere in the lakes so today I'm heading over to the lake district for a couple of days and I can't wait to get there because it's been well overdue a trip over here and I get that little exciting feeling inside my stomach every time I come over here love it absolutely love it so we're still in the midst of this pandemic doesn't want to go away thought we were through it but it's back for revengeance. The, the date now it's uh, 14th of September and we've had to deal with this now since the start of the year and it looks like it's going to keep on running and running but hopefully get through it. Looks like this wind is going to be touch and go whether we keep it under control I just thought I'll get out for a trip. Got a little heat wave just coming in in September. So I've took my holidays at work and I'm gonna enjoy a few days over here. Yeah, so I'm setting off on my journey up to the top of Haystack. And what the shoot I'm going for is a sunset shot of one scale body. And that's gonna be my foreground looking down towards this down the valley towards Buttermere. So I'm making my way up there now, the time is half two. I think it's going to take us a couple of hours to get up there. Just a nice steady pace of trying to do any records. Just a nice stroll up to the top. I'll have a coffee break on the way up and just enjoy this beautiful scenery. Okay, so I'll put up a map now of the route I'm taking up to the top towards uh, Warns Gilbothy. So I'll put that up now, take a look.
time for a well-earned coffee. And I only went and forgot my milk, didn't I? I mean, can you get a better view to sit and have a cup of coffee? It's just so peaceful, right? Not one drop of wind. And there is a bothy just nestled into the side of the mountain. In true Kyle style, the original plan has been aborted. Had to go to plan B because there was people camping where I wanted to take a photograph. So the shot would be ruined, but it is what it is. Might work out better because I think to get a good shot of that bothy in with the sunset, like you need to be at the beginning of the beginning of the year. So you're looking at May, like the beginning of the summer season sort of thing. So you're looking like April or May, so the sun sets a bit further north, I think it is. So what I'm going to do is head to the top of Haystacks, got another shot in mind, might work out better. So we'll see, we'll see, but I've had to work hard for this. It's been a, it's been a tough, tough journey up. Can you hear that? Neither can I. Complete silence. Not one drop of wind. Getting into the golden hour now. Heading to plan B. Here stacks. Okay, so I'm set up for the sunset shot and it's touch and go whether it's going to be a sun, good sunset because there's a, a bank of thick cloud there and you just, I just don't know. But we can live in hope. So this is the composition. Okay, so a camera settings I'm on at the moment. I'm on F11, ISO 100. And I'm on a thirteenth of a second. Oh, sure. Speed. I'm going to put a six stop filter on. Just waiting to see what the sun's going to do. 
But you know, it, it might, something might happen, you know. I mean, it's, there's something starting to happen over there now, actually. I think I might get the six stop one. So it's been good to get out on a hike again. I missed coming here. But with this COVID-19, you know, your time's limited. Get to get to places like this at the moment. With everybody staying here for the holidays, it's all being fully booked. So I've had to come during the week to, to, to get a space. All the campsites are booked. Hotels. But it's nice to get a trip in here before the winter comes. So I'm eventually getting back to the campsite, lit the barbecue, and I've been waiting all day for one of these ice cold Budweiser. Just what you need after a long day's hike. Beautiful. Well, it's a morning now, and I missed the sunrise this morning. I was too tired. I just turned back over and went to sleep. So I missed it, but it didn't look like it was any good anyway. So then few hours like well, could do as good for later on in the day. So today I'm going to be heading over to to North Yorkshire. Heading over to North Yorkshire. <sighs> and I'm having porridge. And a cup of tea for breakfast. Courtesy of the jet boil. So I'm heading to northwest Yorkshire now, leaving the late district. I'm heading to Ribblehead Viaduct for a day, spend a day there, try and find the lone tree. I've just been thinking to myself, uh, I haven't really gotten any decent photos, but I enjoy the experience, and I think that's what you got to do. You know, you've got to just get out there, enjoy the experience first, and if the photos come, it's a bonus. There's no point in being down, you haven't got any good photos. You know, you've got a, you've, you've had a big hike up to the mountain. You've got to enjoy that experience first and foremost. If you get the photos, it's a bonus. So I've just been on a little reflect there on the day yesterday. There might be one, one or two alright snaps, but we'll see when I get back home and have a look. But I haven't even looked through them yet. That's how much confidence I've got in them. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on my way now. It should take about an hour and a half to get there. So I'll see you when I get there. Okay, so I'm trying to find this lone tree now and nobody wants to tell you where it is. It's a very, very secretive tree, apparently. So I'm going to have to just try and find it myself. Oh, I don't know why people are like that. So if I do find it, I'll let you know exactly how you, how you find it. But I've parked here. On the right hand side of the road, got your viaduct over there. I'm hopefully going to be on the right track.
tell you how much absolutely stifling hot here. You wouldn't think it was September. Okay, so I've gotten the first couple of shots in the bag there. What I was doing there was just started off an F11 and I put the 10 stop filter on, it was only giving us a four second exposure. I tried this, tried 16 stops of light, it was too dark. So what I've done now is I've just went to F16 to try and give us a longer shutter speed and it's given us a shutter speed now of, um, of eight seconds. So I'll just fire one off. When you come to a location like this, don't just shoot one shot in one angle. Take a few different ones because you might get home and you might not like it, you know? So get a few d different angles. Try some lower, lower angles. Try a higher angle. You won't get your tripod right up. Flown over the top. I still wasn't satisfied with that result. So what I've done, I've moved further forward instead of being further back. And if you know what, it's, it's working a lot better. It's really emphasizing the tree. It's just making the tree look like, you know, it's, it's, it is the main subject of the photo. So you're not getting any of the viaduct in this way, but you know what? I think this tree makes a picture on its own. I don't think it needs a viaduct. zoomed out I'm all the way out at 16 millimeters I'm just trying some different focal lengths at the moment the sun's just gone in so it's just yeah okay so I think this is going to be the image that um, is going to be the image that I'll be keeping from here a while there to suss out the angles but I definitely think coming in a bit closer missing all that out it just makes the tree look very proud in the image coming from a low angle and yes I think I've, I'm satisfied with what I've getting there Shots in the bag. Time to go and get some food now. There's a landmark for you. Barn. If you see a barn from the roadside, actually, you know, it's pretty straightforward, really. But I went the hard way as usual. As usual. So it's literally straight up a bridle path. So you just, obviously you just jump over that gate at the bottom. So if we park in the car, I'd still, still park in the same spot what I said. You just walk along the road until you reach this fence here. This is where you want to be jumping over here. There's a reference for you there, that wall there at the side of the gate look for that just right at the roadside there's a sign here for Colt Park 
31 degrees. So I'm set up, this is my second shot here now. I was up there, in my first shot, got the classic shot, right on the bank. So I'm just waiting for the, the light to just open up. But it's a fantastic location here. Okay, so that's it for the trip now. I'm gonna head home and I've got to go to work tomorrow. Up bright and early. So I'll put up the images now of what I've taken down here at this viaduct today. So I'll see you next time on another trip, wherever that may be. Who knows? See you next time. Thank you.